Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Maxine and this is my little nook where we talk about books, lifestyle, random stuff. Today I decided to film a mid-year freak out book tag. I'm looking forward to a lot of books coming out late half of the year so let's just get on with it. So the first question is best book you've read so far in 2024 and I've already mentioned this in my previous video but if you haven't watched that I'll mention it again and it is 100 Years of Solitude by Gabriel Garcia Marquez. The premise of the story is we follow the Buendia family and the founding of a small town called Macondo. Chronicles their lives, seven generations of them. It's kind of this conflict between desire of solitude and the need of love. It's a fiction, realism, literature, Literature, fantasy, historical, all that jazz, and I would highly recommend reading it. It's really captivating. Next question is best sequel you've read so far in 2024? I've not read a lot of series recently, but I have read one, and it's by T. King Fisher, Saint of Steel series. I really enjoyed the sequel, which was Paladin Strength. So it talks about paladins of a dead god. How can you be a paladin if your god is dead? Really, is the question there. But yeah, we follow. One character, his a he is a paladin named Ivan, and Clara, who is a nun. Try to investigate, figure out what happened to Clara's nunnery through that journey. There's a bit of romance, a bit of steaminess, overall fun. And I really enjoyed it. It kind of reminds me of like when you go on a quest when you're playing D&D with friends and it feels like that and I really enjoyed it. Next question is new releases you haven't read yet but want to. There are a couple. So um, one of the books that I really wanted to read this year is The Familiar by Leigh Bardugo. I haven't actually read anything from Leigh Bardugo yet and I know she's a beloved author. She has a lot of fans that love her series. I think she did Six of Crows and Shadow and Bone series. I've yet to find a Leigh Bardugo book that I've personally enjoyed but hopefully this would be the one. Premise is we follow a character named Luzia and I believe she has a bit of magic. She's a scullery maid and then her mistress, her boss, finds out that she can do a bit of magic magic so they use her to climb that social ladder and of course she attracts some eyes some of them are not so good and I believe there was a particular one the disgraced secretary of the king of Spain and I think that person wants to win the king's favor again by utilizing Lucia and we follow her story I'm excited for that so hopefully we'll find out um hopefully that will be the first Leigh Bardugo book that I would enjoy. The second book I wanted to read is The Tainted Cup by Robert Jackson Bennett. This is a fantasy mystery thriller. We follow this kind of Holmes Watson situation wherein a detective named Anna and her assistant Din investigate this kind of murder or death that happened. Imperial officer passed away and then suddenly a tree grew out from his body which is kind of like the hook that caught me as well so yeah i'm really interested with that another book that i am also interested in is the warm hands of ghost by katherine arden and this is a historical fiction paranormal magical realism it's about a nurse back in like the great war her name's Laura, Laura Ivan, and she used to be a, she still is a nurse, but she used to be in the nurse corps, but a terrible accident happened and she was discharged, but she still serves in a hospital in is it Halifax. She receives this box with her brother's belongings, who was at that time in the trenches, you know, like serving uh, in the war. She doesn't believe that he's dead. And then they have paranormal help to figure out where his brother is where her brother is. I'm excited to read that. Next question is most anticipated release for the second half of the year. There are a couple that I really like and one of them is Lady Macbeth by Ava Reed. Its expected publication is on the 13th of August 2024 by Del Rey. It's a fantasy, historical fiction, gothic retelling. The majority of, of the people I know have already read Lady Macbeth or know the premise of Lady Macbeth. And also like a lot of people have seen the movie. I, I remember seeing the movie, 2016 movie starring Florence Pugh, also named Lady Macbeth. I really enjoyed that as well. I kind of like retelling so I'm really intrigued on what this author's perspective or how she's going to change up the story. Yeah, so I'm gonna read a bit of the blurb. For you guys. I hope I don't sound so horrible, but yeah. <clears throat> the lady knows the stories that her eyes induce madness in men. The lady knows she will be wed to the Scottish brute who does not leave his warrior's ways behind when he comes to the marriage bed. The lady knows his hostile, suspicious court will be a game of survival, requiring all her wiles and hidden witchcraft to survive. But the lady does not know her husband has an occult secret of his own. She does not know that prophecy girds him like armor. She does not know that her magic is greater and more dangerous and that it will threaten the order of the world. She does not know, yet, 
but she will. <laughs> so I, it's very dramatic. I like it and I'm very interested in retelling. So that's one of the things that I'm interested in as well. Another one that I'm kind of excited about is The Voyage Home by Pat Baker. This is third book of a series called The Women of Troy, which is also the title of the second book. But um, it's expected publication is the 15th of August, 2024. It's under Penguin Books. It's mythology, Greek mythology, historical fiction, historical retellings. So it's just a continuation of the captured Trojan woman as they set sail to Mycenae with the victorious Greeks. This new novel centers on the fate of Cassandra, daughter of King Priam, priestess of Apollo and prophet condemned never to be healed. Not healed, heeded. If you're not aware, if you've not read any of Pat Baker's kind of Women of Troy series. It's just more of a feminist take on basically the siege of Troy and the aftermath of that. It takes on the POVs of Helen, Briseis, and other female characters that were very much affected with the siege of Troy. It really intrigues me when it's not in the perspective of the heroes because you always like see movies and read other books where it's always in the hero's perspective but these are civilians that are affected by what happened at the siege of Troy. So very excited for that. My battery just died, but I hope it's working. So <laughs> let's continue. Biggest disappointment this year, I actually don't have any because I'm um, so far so good and I'm just enjoying the ride, enjoying getting back into reading and getting back into booktube. Next question is biggest surprise. My biggest surprise is finding my new go-to author when it comes to like vacation reads and summer reads and um, like poolside, beach front type of read where you just need to relax and just want that little bit of romance in your life. So that would be Emily Henry. Finding Emily Henry and reading a lot of her books has just brought back color into my life and it's so exciting. And that brings me to the next question is favorite new author or favorite author? And that is Emily Henry for chill summer reads, you know, with a mojito or daiquiri or pina colada in your hand. And it's just mwah. for cozy fantasy. I really like T. King Fisher. I've just enjoyed all of the books that T. King Fisher has published so far. And I'm very happy with that. Next question is newest favorite character and I really don't have any so I'm not gonna answer that. I don't really cling on to a lot of characters like they don't like I'll cling on to the plot maybe sometimes there are some characters that I'm really kind of relating to but there's just too many that I've read that I they're like a blur in my head to be honest with you. We'll move on to the next question which is a book that made you cry and I reread The Twilight Saga and was watching the movies at the same time. So when I say that at the very end where Bella shows Edward everything that she was thinking ever since she met him, their first eye contact, that iconic scene in that classroom, the wedding, and it's just, I cried like a baby. Yes, I did. I cried like a baby and it always gets me. I don't know if it was the movie or the book or both of them at the same time and the soundtrack and the meadow. I, for me, I don't know if everybody, anyone agrees with me, but I think the movie did it better. Just saying, that scene, movie, movie did it better. But reading the books at the same time was just... Anyway, next question is the book that made you happy. And I gotta say, this is a wild card, but some of the books that Emily Henry had published, I read and some of them I listened through audio. And then this narrator was so amazing. So I looked her up. Her name's Julia Whelan. Whelan? I'm not sure how to pronounce her last name, but she writes books herself. And she wrote this amazing book and it's called Thank You For Listening. Get it? Because every after an audiobook, you get like a thank you for listening. This is audible. And of course, I listened to this one as well. And it's about a, get this, audiobook narrator named Swanee Chester. So Swanee Chester is an audiobook narrator who 
used to be an actress but her dreams got shattered after a freak accident and she has to kind of do this kind of duet or like um work with another audiobook narrator this guy what's his name again brock mm. and he, gotta say Julia Whelan is such a great narrator because I honestly thought that Brock was a whole different person sometimes like when he's narrating it's so good um, and it's like it's a perspective of an actual audiobook narrator narrating a story about an audiobook narrator and something to do with green apples and it's just it's good and I really like it and if you don't know who Julia Whe Whelan is um, dubbed as the Adele of audiobooks by the New Yorker, Julia Whelan is a writer, lifelong actor, and acclaimed audiobook narrator. That's pretty much it. And and she does. She is such a good audiobook narrator, and it really helps when you're listening to audiobooks to have a good narrator because that really helps you get into the book. If you can't stand the way people pronounce things, it it doesn't work. It really doesn't. And the next question is favorite book to movie adaptation uh, I think I don't I don't remember okay Google when did Dune part 2 come out on cinemas in the United Kingdom June there you go it's still in this year <laughs> so um, Dune part 2 came out first of March and it's still by far my favorite adaptation especially for a sci-fi so um, if you're not aware, Dune by Frank Herbert is a science fiction novel. It's a series of books and it takes place in a desert planet named Arrakis. Dune is a story of a boy named Paul Atreides, heir to a noble family tasked to manage and rule the inhospitable world of Arrakis. Arrakis is a place where you find spice, melange, uh, a drug capable of extending life, enhancing consciousness, and it's coveted across the universe. Basically, Paul Atreides gets through it, man. He goes through it, goes through the worst things possible that can ever happen to a human being. But he is now the chosen one, the Muad'Dib, the Shai Hulud, no, not Shai Hulud, Shai Hulud's the worm. The Muad'Dib, the Isan al Gaib, all that jazz. And Dune has been adapted multiple times. It's been adapted um, as a TV series. And it has also been adapted by David Lynch back in the 1980s. Was it 1980s? Okay, Google. When was Dune by David Lynch released? In the United Kingdom, yeah. Dune was released on the 14th of December, 1984. Yeah, so Dune was... Dune in the 80s was a thing. I think the, um, the actor was uh, Kyle MacLachlan. There was a pug involved. Denis Villeneuve gave it justice. It was almost considered like one of those... Um, unadaptable movies because of the how high concept it is and because of the technology nowadays and of course the genius Denis Villeneuve. It was perfect. For me it was perfect and I think a lot of people watched a movie but not read the books yet and I urge people to read the books. It's so good and it's it's more to it. There's more to it than the, just that one book and it's one of the one of the best movies I've ever seen. Like, not I'm saying that like being too flammable. It's really a great movie and I really enjoyed that and it's visually stunning. It stars uh, Timothy Chalamet, Zendaya, Florence Pugh and a whole load of very talented other characters and it's just so good. Next question is favorite review and I don't have a particular review that I can remember. I have favorite reviewers. They're my fav there are some favorite booktubers that I kind of lean to when I don't know what to read next. I take their positive and negative comments and then kind of pick like, because again, what works for them doesn't work for me. And what doesn't work for them works for me. So I take everything that they say, research about the book and then pick a new one. Um, so I can't really answer that specifically, but in general, I have a lot of booktubers that I love and just watch their content. Last and final question is what books do I need to read by the end of this year? I need to finish Children of Dune. I think I started reading it back in 2021 and it's still it's still there. So I need to finish that and I need to finish Live Ship Traders series by Robin Hobb. It's been on my TBR for since 2022 I think. After I finished the first trilogy which was the Farseer trilogy. I've not moved forward 
with live ship i think i started it but never finished the first book so it's just been i think i'm like maybe 15 percent into the book so i really need to finish that so just to give you a bit of an idea of what the live ship trader series by robin hobb is this is just based on wikipedia but the live ship traders is a trilogy of fantasy novels by american author robin hobb a nautical fantasy series the Lightship Traders is a second trilogy set in the realm of the Elderlings, so there's m a lot more books into it. I think it's 16 books? I think so. And it features pirates, sea serpents, family of traders, and their living ships. So I'm quite excited for that. I think I recommended this, uh, like a uh, buddy read with one of my coworkers, and he's finished it like ages ago, and I've not and he said he really enjoyed it so i really should pick it up but yeah that's my mid-year freak out book tag and i hope you enjoyed thank you so much for sticking it to the end of the video if you're watching still watching thank you so much leave a comment down below if you don't know what to comment you can just drop an emoji or whatever you want to drop down there and yeah i'll see you again next time see ya bye